MC Lobshear, the host of the Cash Ninja podcast and also the president and chief wealth and investment strategist of Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate cash flow banking, also known as infinite banking, with their business and investments. If you're interested in learning more about how we create strategies that integrate cash flow banking and investments to turbocharge them, you can access a video series at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Welcome to the Cash Flow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Here is your host inside the dojo, MC Laubscher. Hello, Cashflow Ninjas. MC Lobster here, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today, and in today's show, I'm joined again by my friend, Kevin Nichols, uh, that will share how institutional investors buy their equity with life settlements. Kevin is a managing partner at Penumbra Solutions. Penumbra funds invest in hundreds of senior life settlements insurance policies. With a target yield in the low double digits, no market risk and no premium calls, professional management and funds locked up safely in escrow, this might be the best investment you've never heard of. A life settlement is the sale of an existing life insurance policy to a third party for more than its cash surrender value, but less than its net death benefit. There are a number of reasons that a policy owner may choose to sell his or her life insurance policy. Kevin's been on the show uh, twice before sharing more about this investment, and we're going to dive even a little bit deeper in today's episode uh, into life settlements. If you're interested in joining our investors group, you can go to cashflowninja.com forward slash investors group and fill out an application form or email me at info at cashflowninja.com to start the discussion to see if you're a good fit for our group. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the United States. Our simple proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Learn how to find the best deals by downloading your free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing at noradarealestate.com. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com. Joining me back on the Cashflow Ninja podcast is my friend Kevin Nichols from Penumbra Solutions. Kevin, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Great to be with you, MC. Yeah, always enjoy our conversations and uh, looking forward to our discussion today. I figured a good place for us to start is just to share uh, for our listeners that's not familiar with you and what you do. Um, new listeners, Kevin has been on the show before. There's two other episodes where uh, we've discussed uh, in some manner uh, also uh, the life settlements, which we'll be getting into today. But before we jump into that, Kevin, can you share a little bit about uh, your background and journey with, uh, with my new listeners? Sure, happy to. Been a financial advisor for many, many years. Uh, more than I care to admit, quite frankly. And that was our, my partner and I, Jim Walsh, that was our primary job for many years. And then uh, we, um, we, started, we started buying fractionalized life settlements as an investment for ourselves and then ultimately for some of our clients and uh, did very well with them. And then one day we were sitting here and, and I think he had had a, a policy mature and I had actually gotten a premium call where I needed to put more money into the policy to make premium payments. Uh, and we got, that happened on the same day. So I was going to have to spend money and he made money and, and it, it was his idea. And he said, you know, why don't we put, what if we put these together? So we both owned them and we both owned all of them. That way, if one of us gets a victory, we both win. And if one of us has to make a premium payment, we both have to share in that. And um, I said, you know, that's a great idea. We need to look into that. And furthermore, why don't we look and see if, uh, um, you know, my dad is an investor as well, as was his mother-in-law, as, you know, as, as was my brother-in-law and many other family members. And so we looked into creating essentially a pool. We put all our, our, our policies together and um, uh, we had some other clients that wanted to do it and we created our first private equity fund. And, and then um, it worked perfectly. And um, it, that's exactly the same 
structure that we have today. We really haven't changed it at all. Um, and um, it's gotten to the point where really now this is all we can do is manage these funds. And uh, uh, we have advisors who, who bring us their clients and we have clients from all over the world. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they like the yield. They like the, the fact that it's not tied to the, uh, the market at all. Uh, they like being able to, to, you know, buy their growth up front and um, uh, lock in their, their, their growth. So it works perfectly. Absolutely. And uh, listeners of the show, uh, what you, you just shared in your sh story will sound familiar because we have folks on that they invest and they're in the, in the vehicles in the space that they operate in themselves. It's in, uh, just someone coming in from the outside and uh, sharing a product or something that they're selling that they're not personally investing in. Um, and, and that they, uh, yeah, that they've personally been investing in for a while. So thank you for sharing that. Now, Kevin, can you uh, share what Live Settlements is and, uh, yeah, why people haven't heard of this before and, and how long it's been around? Sure. Well, the, the first Live Settlement uh, happened technically uh, in 1911 uh, and uh, where a, a, a physician had a patient who needed a medical procedure and he didn't have the money and um, the uh, the patient offered to uh, offered his life insurance policy to the physician and and he accepted it in payment and so what happened was was many years later when the patient died uh, the physician was able to collect on the death benefit of the policy and so of course the insurance company complained and, and took it to court and it actually went all the way to the Supreme Court where uh, the court ruled that in, you know, once a policy has gone past the contestability period, uh, it belongs, it is personal property to, uh, of the, uh, of the owner. Um, and it can be sold and they can be bought and sold without any problem. And so, uh, and that, that opinion was actually written by uh, none other than, uh, Supreme court justice, Oliver Wendell Holmes. Uh, and that has been the law of the land and has been challenged many times by insurance companies and it has, uh, uh, it has held up. And so it, that's, that's the law on which we base this business and, and this investment, uh, you know, over a hundred years later, uh, why most people haven't heard of it is because it takes an enormous amount of capital, as you might imagine, to, to buy these policies and then to service the policy because you have to make the premium payments, uh, until the person passes away. So you want to make sure that you're able to to manage that that obligation, uh, that premium load, uh, or mitigate it somehow, and um, so that that that's kind of the the secret to doing it is uh, being able to to manage it and to uh, to not have a policy that is going to by the time you by the time you're able to collect, uh, you know it's it's no longer profitable. So uh, that's that's been the key to it. But uh, it's, it has historically been used by uh, institutions. It's, it's back today, the largest institution or the largest buyer of these policies today is uh, AIG. Uh, they invest billions and billions of dollars uh, in the marketplace every year. And they don't do it under their own name. Uh, they have another company, a subsidiary that does it. And, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, the insurance companies may not like this, but, you know, it's certainly legal. And furthermore, they benefit from it because they do it themselves. So uh, Warren Buffett is an enormous player. Uh, many, many institutions that we, you know, that are, that are very familiar names to us uh, do this, uh, you know, every year. Uh, and we're just not able to, no, you know, nobody knows about it because it just costs so much money. So uh, it, it wasn't until probably 10 years ago that we, we came to market with, you know, our first fund that actually brought it down to uh, the size where, an average investor could could take advantage of uh, a, a decent return, decent yield, uh, no market risk, and uh, where an, uh, an American insurance company is absolutely guaranteeing, guaranteeing his money. Not only are they guaranteeing his what he paid, but they're also guaranteeing his growth. So what we don't know is when we're going to get that growth, and so that's where the you know kind of the tricky part is, or where the you know the key to to, to doing this is. What's the approximate size of this market right now um, compared, to, yeah, compared to the general insurance market? Yeah. Uh, 
compared to the general, you know, the, the general insurance market, this represents less less than one percent of their business. Less than one percent of, of of life insurance policies uh, are settled. Uh, so there is an enormous upside in terms of, of of policies to be purchased out there. You know, the, the market probably just fewer than you know, four years ago, you know, we, it was about a half a percent. Now it's about 1%. So people are becoming more and more aware that they don't have to, to lapse a policy uh, when it comes, you know, when they, they get near the end, uh, they can actually sell it. Even if it's a term policy, they can, we can have that converted generally to a, a universal life policy. And uh, we can, we can then uh, make it maybe consider it for purchase. So uh, it's good for the, it's, it's good for the insured and it, it's good for the investor as well. So the, the only people who don't like it are the insurance companies because, uh, you know, now they're going to have to pay out on a policy that probably or possibly would have lapsed before. Interesting to note that that 95% of all life insurance uh, that is in force will lapse. In other words, people will abandon the policy. And, you know, if you're in the insurance business and you're an insurance company, you hope that happens because think about this. They're going to make premium payments to you for years and years and years. And if there's no cash value of the policy, which most policies don't have cash value, uh, and when you lapse the policy, they walk away with all that money. I mean, it's a great, it's a great uh, investment for them. I mean, and that's why insurance, you know, American insurance companies are probably the strongest financial institutions in the entire world, much stronger than the banks. Um, you've never, you, you know, you, you don't hear of, of an insurance company, a life insurance company going, uh, you know, going broke or going out of business. Uh, I mean, people, Sometimes we'll say, well, what about AIG? They went out of business. Well, that wasn't really AIG. That was a subsidiary of theirs that was uh, uh, trading uh, ETFs and uh, derivatives overseas because they can't do that here in this country. It's illegal for obvious reasons. So right. it's, uh, I mean, we could go on and on, but it's a, they're it's very, very strong investment, very strong investment. In fact, since 1845, no American life insurance company who had a B plus or better rated uh, better rating has ever failed to pay on a, on a death benefit or an annuity claim. So it's wow. about, a, about as secure as you're going to get. Yeah. And you mentioned the lapsing. I just uh, browsed over some, some data too. And it, there's over $1.5 trillion of life policies lapsing uh, to what you just mentioned. And uh, obviously we, we've covered a little bit of uh, the, uh, the universal life uh, policy uh, uh, problems and challenges, especially as the policy matures and people get older and o older and the premiums become unaffordable because now all of a sudden there's a renewable term that, uh, that really, really skyrockets the insurance cost. So all of a sudden now uh, that becomes unaffordable. Right. So what happens? They either have to surrender the policy and just walk away and it lapses or there are other options available. You've touched on a little bit of the benefits on both sides. Um, if you could just throw in a couple, uh, a couple more benefits there uh, for for buyers of life settlements, and then also the other side of the coin, the sellers of it. Uh, wh what are some of the main and primary reasons that a lot of people would consider selling these policies? Sure. Well, the uh, say, say someone is in their eighties, for example, and. Uh, you know, you've got this policy that now that say it started as a term policy and now they've gotten to the point where uh, they're probably not insurable if they were to try and get a new policy. So they decide to go ahead and convert that term policy to a universal life policy because it's guaranteed renewable to age 105 or 110, what have you. But the premium load is going to go up exponentially. And so now all of a sudden they can't afford that policy anymore. It doesn't have any cash value, but they can't afford the coverage. So for them, to sell the policy they're you know, it, it probably has zero cash value. We're going to give them, you know, a substantial amount depending on their age, on their health, et cetera, and on the policy. Uh, and so that's money that they no longer, they would not have gotten. Furthermore, they don't have to make the premium payments anymore. Uh, so that's a, you know, that, that's a, a, a cash flow uh, drain that they no longer have to experience. We also make sure that before we buy a policy that, that the, the uh, uh, beneficiaries, the current beneficiaries uh, are notified so that if they want to buy the policy, they can. But most of them, I mean, they, they never they never do because they don't they don't have the, the means or the wherewithal to do so. But that could be something they might do. Uh, if not, we have them sign off so that they understand that, you know, grandma or grandpa are selling this policy and, and um, you know, they're not going to be entitled to anything. And so um, 
So from a, a seller's standpoint, it, it's a windfall. It's fantastic. Um, Sometimes we have, we take, we'll buy a policy and uh, the people will need to retain some of the death benefits. Say they've got a $5 million policy and they'd like to hang on to a million dollars for uh, just for their estate purposes. And so we can structure a deal that way where we'll pick up the premium payments and uh, we'll give them some cash up front. And uh, when they pass, uh, we collect 4 million of the 5 million uh, and they collect a million or their heirs collect a million. And so it's a win-win from an investor standpoint. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful uh, investment from the standpoint that, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's no market risk whatsoever, whether the stock stock market goes up, down or sideways, or the economy goes sideways, it has no bearing on this. Because remember, we're dealing with financial institutions that have survived uh, the Great Depression of 29. Uh, these are the strongest financial institutions in the entire world. Um, so from, you know, if, if, if insurance is safe, then certainly life uh, settlement policies are safe as well. Um, because now instead of buying an annuity where you may get two or 3% or 4% per year, uh, you know, the, you have the ability to invest in, uh, you know, death benefits from senior citizens who no longer need the policies and your yield can any, be anywhere from, you know, 10, 12, 14, 17%. Um, and you've got the same guarantees that you would have on an annuity or a life policy. So uh, it works very nicely for them. What it, what it works best for is, is for people who aren't going to be needing the money <clears throat> for the next eight to 10 years. Those are ideal clients for us. So we have a lot of physicians, business owners, uh, attorneys, what have you, uh, who want growth. They don't want the market risk. They have other things that they're doing, other, other investments. Perhaps they're doing real estate. Perhaps they're doing notes or, or you know, what have you. Um, but this is for the money you can't afford to lose. This is for your, the, the base of your pyramid. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it, we know that in, in eight to 10 years that the value of our investment is going to go up significantly anywhere from, anywhere from, two to three times our original investment. What it doesn't provide um, is liquidity. So if someone is looking for something that's going to be paying them, uh, you know, on a regular basis, like a bond or a, 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 a CD or something of that nature, uh, this isn't that. It's not like an annuity that you're going to get a, uh, you know, a, a stream of income from. What you're going to get is lump sum uh, toward the end. Now, you can get you, you will get some distributions after about four or five years, but the majority of your money will come at the end uh, when uh, all the policies have matured. And one other thing that's that's critical here, uh, MC, is we don't ever touch a client's money. We don't ever have e even have access to it. We use a third party custodian. We use Bank of Utah. They are FDIC insured and they, they hold and control all the money. So we don't ever even have access to uh, to the money. Absolutely. So not a cash flow play, growth play with a lump sum. That's one of the things uh, to, to remember with this. Um, and then the other thing, if I have to do a survey, Kevin, of probably of the most uh, uh, overquoted quotes at water coolers, coffee shops, cocktail parties, you run into the Warren Buffett, you know, rule number one of investing, right? You know, never, never lose money. Rule right. number two, follow rule number one. And the other one is, well, you know, you make, you make your money when you buy, you make your money on the buy, right? You well, that, over and over and over. And then a lot of folks, they still don't know what that means. This is right. an, this is an investment. I think, and maybe you can talk uh, us to a little bit where, you are actually, yeah, there's a downside protection, as, as you said, not correlated to any markets, but there's also an opportunity here to buy, quote unquote, your equity um, when you purchase, because you purchase assets at a discount. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, I can. So if you, if you, if you had the opportunity to, to, to buy something, uh, say it was a piece of art. Well, let's say, let's say it's a piece of land. Okay. If you had the opportunity to buy a piece of land, say for a hundred thousand dollars and you knew because your friend at, at the, at the, the, the city planning commission told you that there's going to be a freeway coming right through your land in, in five years. Okay. And it's already been signed and the money's allocated and it's, it's, it's a certain, it's a certainty. Um, then you bought the land and you know that it's going to be worth double in six years. 
Okay, so what you're doing is you're buying your growth at a discount. You're taking that two hundred thousand, you're turning it into, or you're tur taking that hundred thousand, turning it into two hundred thousand. It's going to happen inside of six years. If it happens before that, so much the better. But if it happens in six years, you've, you've gotten exactly what you wanted. So if you can buy uh, at a discount. Uh, you're always going to be better off because you're, you're locking in your growth. It's like if you, you know, someone said, okay, you can buy this stock today, um, you know, or today the stock is $100 a share, but uh, you know, we're going to go back to where, a point where it was $50 a share. You have the option to do that only on today. You know, is that something you do? And the answer is, of course, absolutely you do. So we're, we're locking in our growth, uh, and that growth is guaranteed by the American insurance companies. Um, what is not guaranteed is, is when we will receive that growth. And so that's where we have to be careful because if someone said, hey, I'm, I have an investment here and you're going to double your money, okay? And it's going to be uh, soon, but you don't know when, all right? Well, if you're able to double your money inside you know, seven years, okay, that's reasonable. If it takes 20 years, maybe not so much, especially if, if you have to put in uh, money on an annual basis to maintain uh, just like real estate investments, you're going to have to put in money to to uh, uh, cover the taxes on on the the land. Um, these life insurance policies, you have to put in money every year to cover the premium payments, and those premium payments can get go up, and they can be quite high. But if you can plan for that, and you can you can you can make your buying decision based upon those those factors, uh, you can you can be very profitable uh, in, in this in this kind of a transaction, very profitable. You're listening to Kevin Nichols on the Cashflow Ninja podcast. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. You're listening to Kevin Nichols on the Cashflow Ninja podcast and are back to our interview. Yeah, abs absolutely. Now, you had mentioned buying uh, policies at a discount, and this is one uh, area that uh, that you guys do a phenomenal job. Can you share a little bit more about uh, how you buy policies um, and, and then what, what the process is like as well? Sure. When uh, we have about four or five uh, brokers, agents, attorney law firms that come to us, and they say, hey, I have a client who has a policy they might want to, uh, to sell. Uh, would you be interested? And so we would say, you know, what's, what's the age of the client? Who's the insurance company, et cetera. Uh, and so we would then receive a package. Uh, and we would, in that package would be a, uh, uh, a medically underwritten life expectancy estimate. In fact, there'd be two of them in there from companies that we, we respect who say, okay, we've looked. And these are, these are companies who, who they're in the business of, trying to predict when people are going to pass, okay, based upon health conditions, based upon medical records, et cetera. Um, we take that and we evaluate that. And then we also use uh, the, the uh, actuarial tables from the Center for Disease Control uh, on when people, how long people can, you know, are going to live. And we also use what is called the valuation basic table, which is put out by the insurance industry. Um, which says, okay, if someone is 77 today, the odds are that they are going, you know, half of them will live to be, uh, you know, 88. And some will live beyond, half will live beyond that, half will live less than that. And so we, we put all this together and we, we, we have uh, some algorithms that we use and we, base, we, we make a buying decision as to whether or not we're going to purchase the policy. What's the death benefit? How much does the, the investor want? Or does the seller want? What is the premium load? Uh, what is our yield going to be? So there are a lot of factors that go into it. And so once we decide, we will make an offer to the, uh, to the seller of the policy. Uh, and if they accept the offer, then we put money into escrow. We put money into escrow because they're going to have to have some things that they have to do. They're going to have to uh, sign some documentation. We're going to have to get releases from their beneficiaries so that they're not going to sue us. Uh, we need to get, uh, we need to get, uh, uh, 
an assignment or not an assignment, but a change of ownership from the insurance company. So the insurance company knows what we're doing. There's no surprise here. Everybody knows what's, what, what is happening. And then once all of those, like a real estate transaction, once all of those conditions have been met, uh, the, uh, the escrow agent will release the money to the seller and to the, or the seller's agent, uh, the seller's agent then gets paid. Um, and then, um, then we own the policy from that point on, we'll make the premium payments. And when the insured passes, we receive the death benefit. Can you jump into the management of it a little bit more? Because, uh, just like in real estate, there could be a capital call. There's a premium call in, in, in this, in this vehicle. So what are some of the the ways that it's managed efficiently and uh, that's uh, kind of a secret sauce that you bring to the table. And then <laughs> what are some of the, what are some of the risk management strategies employed? Sure. Well, first off, we focus on very old people. If you go, we own probably 1800 life insurance policies and the average age of the insureds across all of those policies is approximately 91 years old. So we're dealing with very old senior citizens. So right off the bat, we know that we're not going to be holding these policies for 10 to 15 years. That's, that's not our objective. Okay. Um, furthermore, when we make a buying decision, we, uh, we look and we see, okay, what is the premium obligation on this policy uh, to the point where we think they're going to pass? So we say we've got a 90 year old female and uh, she's got a 50% chance of living beyond 95. Uh, or 50% chance of living less than 95. We combine that with her, her medically underwritten life expectancy estimates and say, okay, uh, we think she's probably going to live a little less than 95. What is the premium load going to be on our fund it, over that period of time? In other words, how much are we going to spend? And essentially, we add that to the cost of buying. So <clears throat> when we have a fund that ra we raise money, we put together uh, a pool. Uh, Say, for example, we raise $10 million. We're going to be looking to go out and deploy that capital and buy policies that are going to bring us death benefits in the range of $30 million, let's say. So roughly three to one. Now, but the key is that $10 million, we are not going to spend all $10 million. We're going to hold back oh, probably three and a half to $4 million in cash that is purely for premiums, for future premiums to cover the next two and a half to three years. So uh, we've got the money up front. There's no debt. We don't have any debt in any, any of our funds. Um, so we've got the cash up front to make the premium payments. Now, once policies begin to mature within the first year, two years, three years, the, that money, those maturities come in and they're held by Bank of Utah in the custodial account. And that's used to replenish the premium reserve account until we get to a point where uh, we've kind of reached the tipping point where it's, it's no longer, uh, you know, after about year five or so, you've got enough money to cover premiums for the remainder of the, of the policies for the remainder of the term. Uh, and everything is then distributed directly to the investors back into their accounts via the custodian. The custodian sends everything, distributes everything to the investors. And one of the things uh, that uh, you guys like to uh, do, well, do as well as you invest alongside your investors in your own fund. You eat your home cooking. Yes, so we do. It, so yes, when it do. comes to when it comes to management and, and, and fees and, and, and efficiency, can you speak uh, a little bit more to that as well? Absolutely. Uh, we do eat our own cooking. That's one thing uh, we're very big on. Uh, we have skin in the game right alongside uh, your investors, um, and. Uh, uh, one of the things that was key when we started doing this is that the fees be incredibly low and, and our, our fees have, have not gone up since our first fund. And what we do is when an investor comes in and invests, we take one and a half percent of the investment and that goes to reimburse us for setting up the fund, uh, for paying the escrow, the legal, the accounting, the printing, what have you. That's called an organizational and offering fee. Okay, so that comes back to us directly. Um, then there are no ongoing fees, none, until uh, as a, when a policy matures, we get 2.5% of the payout, and that's our management fee on the back end. So we get 1.5% up front, 2.5% on the back end, so a total of four points. Now, if you 
looked and said, okay, the average a fund is going to last on average, say, eight years, which is long, quite frankly, because remember, the average age here is about 90. I don't know too many people that live beyond 95 or 96, let alone 98. But say eight years. If the fund lasted eight years, then that's on average a half a percent per year for management. So we think that's pretty reasonable. Um, and uh, it, it, it just works beautifully. One thing we never ever wanted to do was because this was originally set up for ourselves uh, and our family members and some of our high value clients, I don't ever want to be accused of having high fees. So uh, many private equity funds, you know, they're going to charge you a fee up front and they're going to charge you an annual fee uh, and their portion of the, of the payout can be as high as 20% of whatever happens on the back end. Um, and that's just, in our opinion, is just ridiculous. It doesn't need to be that high. So we've kept it low. We started with it low. Uh, and we've not ever raised it. Let's talk a little bit about who this is a, a good fit for and some of the disadvantages. We've mentioned it's not a cash flow play. It's a, it's more of a, a, of a yeah, of a lump sum payout towards the end. Uh, so maybe if you could touch on those two points. Sure, absolutely. It's not a cash flow play. It's a growth play. Um, and uh, for anybody who's who's you know got. You know, the minimum investment is 100000 If you've got clients that, that, you know, this might be the right thing for and, and they want to put 70000 in or something like that, that's all they can afford in, right now, then, you know, we'll certainly talk to them and, and consider it. Uh, but it's designed for accredited investors. Uh, it's not designed for the general population. Uh, that being said, we can take up to 35 non-accredited investors in each fund. Um, and uh, we can only handle a total of 99 investors in every fund. After we hit 99 investors, um, and that includes ourselves, then we have to close the fund. And that means we can no longer raise any more money in that fund and we'll have to wait to open another fund. And that happens every year. So uh, we'll be opening another fund uh, in February. We just closed uh, our eighth fund um, in uh, last month and uh, we're still wrapping up business in that, but uh, we'll be opening again in, uh, in January, in, or actually January, I said February, but it's actually January. Uh, the 15th, and uh, we already have people lining up to invest in that. So, um, and the beautiful thing about investing early is that, um, you know, we always have policies that mature early. And um, when that happens, inside the first year, um, you know, from January to November, we'll be raising money. And it's, it's, it's common. In fact, it's happened about seven out of the eight times. Uh, we'll have a policy that matures during that raise period. And when that happens, those investors who are already in the fund uh, get a windfall because that is a huge bonus to them uh, because only the investors in the fund can participate in the growth um, when it occurs. So that happens, uh, you know, every year and it's, uh, it, it's a nice windfall for those investors that are in early. So, uh, you know, for people who, who, you know, person who, who this isn't, right for if you know if you're if you know that you're going to need the money for to live on inside the next six years eight years uh even 10 years i would say don't put it here uh there are other things that i'm sure you can recommend that that are safe uh that provide cash flow so th this is for money that you don't want to put at risk what we say is is this is not for all your money it's only for the, the money you can't afford to lose so but for uh someone you know, we have we have clients who are as old as 80 who, who bring us money every year. Uh, they're obviously, very they're very financially secure. Um, but probably the majority of the people are, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, again, high income earners, uh, business owners, uh, or someone who's been with a company for a long time and got a nice 401k and they want to roll it over and they want to, you know, get into something that's going to be safe. They've got another 10 or 15 years to work uh, and they want to have good growth and they want to make sure that it's not... Uh, uh, you know, nothing, it's not eaten up by, by fees and, um, and that it's certainly that it's not exposed to the market at all. Uh, the tax treatment of this investment on, there has been some changes in the new, uh, tax act that there was passed. Um, just a disclaimer, <laughs> Kevin and myself, we're not tax professionals. We're not CPAs. So please do check with your tax strategist on your team with your CPA. But, um, if you could speak just a little bit to that and share a little bit more information, I think that sure. would be very valuable. Well, the beautiful thing about life insurance is it's got this, this golden goose treatment, um, and that is, you know, if you are, if you pass, you've got a life insurance policy and your wife 
uh, you know, is the beneficiary. When she receives that money, of course, it's tax-free forever. Um, now, if you sell the policy to us and we buy the policy, we lose that, that golden goose status. So that money is now taxed. So when a policy that we hold matures, it's going to be taxed. And, and what was recently uh, decided by the IRS is that it's going to be taxed as income. So um, now, considering that probably 80% of the, of the money that's invested in our funds is qualified money or you know, IRAs, rollover 401ks, uh, et cetera, uh, that's inconsequential because it's going to be taxed as income anyway once you start taking it out of your IRA and once you start taking it in your retirement. Um, but from time to time, we also sell policies. Uh, if we hold a policy and it's – sometimes we'll buy, buy a policy knowing that it's not going to quite fit our long-term goals, but it's a policy that we can buy properly and, and buy right. So we'll wait until there are uh, other companies out there looking for policies, um, and we call it stupid money. When there's stupid money in the market, uh, we'll have, we have policies that we'll just unload. And when we unload those policies, that money that comes in is then uh, taxed as long-term capital gains. And uh, that happens, uh, it, it probably happens more than most people, well, it happens more than it should. The situation is essentially this. We, when we raise money, we don't have to deploy capital immediately. And so we wait and we're very selective in what we buy. And that's one of the reasons we've been so successful. Uh, but you need to, you know, your investors need to understand that we don't make money until we deploy their capital. Okay. Now, considering that we are, uh, you know, a small boutique firm and has, we have very low overhead, um, we may wait three or four months before we deploy capital because we don't, we don't have to, you know, create cash flow immediately. But if you've got companies that have got large overhead and you've got multiple partners that are making six to, you know, high six to seven figures a year, uh, and you've got other staff and you have to, you have to have uh, cash flow to cover payroll, uh, then you have to deploy capital almost immediately. And when you have to deploy capital immediately, you don't know what's going to be out there. So, there are companies that will go out, that will be looking for policies and they'll, they just need to buy so they can stay in business. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right, or the right policy for the investors or for the fund, but they have to get something moving. Otherwise, they can't make payroll. And so that's, when that occurs, we call that stupid money. And when that's out there, um, we're more than happy to take advantage of it so that our, our investors can benefit from it. And we've done it many times. And uh, usually it's a situation where we hold the policy for a year and then we'll sell it for a 20 to 30% gain um, and return that money back to our investors and uh, put that money back in the coffers and move on and wait for the next one. So uh, we do that quite frequently as well. So, but uh, when that occurs again, that is uh, long-term capital gains and those are not, uh, uh, those, that's not subject to income tax. Now, if in fact you have invested through uh, your, uh, through your, your IRA, um, then it's going to be income to you no matter what. It just doesn't matter. So, Kevin, how can my listeners uh, learn more about this? There's a webinar that you have available, I believe, for them to, to get more information and drill down a little bit more deeper into the, the information you have available. Where can, they, where can they get that information and how can they reach out to you guys to contact you uh, for more information about your funds? Sure, absolutely. The easiest way we have a uh, we have an online video presentation. It's at um, it's www.thepenumbraplan.com, and I'll spell penumbra. It's spelled P as in Paul, E N as in Nancy, U M as in Mary, B as in boy, R A. Penumbra, thepenumbraplan.com, and it'll ask for your information: first name, last name, email address, uh, and please don't put in a bogus email address. We don't check them, but we also don't pester you. We don't sell them. We don't follow up. So, uh, but you put in an email address and then you click, check the box. that says you're an accredited investor. Even if you're not an accredited investor, uh, we'll have, you know, go ahead and check the box if you want to watch the video. Um, and then it'll ask for a password and that password is penumbra, all lowercase. Again, P E N as in Nancy, U M as in Mary, B R A. Um, and then from there, you'll be able to uh, watch the video. And it's about a 12-minute video presentation that's just kind of an overview of what we do and how we do it, uh, what the benefits are. Uh, and then uh, if you'd like more information, there's a way uh, you can actually uh, enter your phone number there, and I'll give you a call. 
uh, if you'd, uh, or you can, if you can read the, the actual online uh, memorandum of private placement, which is, is there as well. If you'd like a copy of that, then you give us your phone number and I'll follow up with you or, uh, you know, send an email to me. Uh, our contact information is on the front page of our, uh, of the video presentation, but uh, my email is kevin at penumbrasolutions.com. Uh, my phone number here is area code 817-479-9770. Uh, give me a call anytime. Happy to discuss it with you. They can call you directly. Um, and um, if you're ever in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area and would like to stop by and visit our office, we welcome that. We have clients every year uh, that, that come. In fact, I've got two coming uh, later this month. So uh, we welcome people to come and see us, see that we are for real and, and, and see what we do and how we do it and um, maybe feel a little bit of the magic. Fantastic. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, always enjoy having you on and uh, sharing more information about this uh, investment class and vehicle that not a lot of people are familiar about. So thank you so much again, uh, uh, providing so much value for my listeners. And um, yeah, just uh, uh, great, to, great to have you back on. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be with you. MC Lobshire, the creator and host of The Cashflow Ninja and president of Producers Wealth. And I'm on a mission to help you achieve economic and financial freedom as quickly as possible. I achieve this by integrating the infinite banking concept with real estate investments to increase your efficiency and returns and recapture cash flow that you're not even aware of that you're losing. I share the number one strategy for investors in my holistic wealth creation course at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Thank you for joining me again on the Cashflow Ninja. Thank you for all your support. You rock. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can sign up for our newsletter at cashflowninja.com or text Cashflow Ninja to 44222. I'm also posting daily videos on Facebook and YouTube and will live stream weekly starting May 2018. To make sure you don't miss any of the live streams, please like and subscribe to my Facebook and YouTube platforms. I'm also dropping content on Instagram daily. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to get in on the action. I want to thank you for spending your most precious resource with me today, your time. That's our show for today. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, such situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.